In the 8th chapter of Romans, there's just one little verse I want to look at. It's verse 29. And it just says this, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. We'll just quit there. That's not even the whole verse. This is God's fundamental, though it's so shortly mentioned, this is really the culmination of his entire aim for us in redemption. He wants us to be conformed to the image of his Son. Now, there are a lot of people who believe that in reality, how is that even possible? Can we really be like Jesus? Well, we're not only commanded in a number of places to be that very thing, but also here we see it is given as God's fundamental desire that we be like his son. Now, there are two ways, I think, in which we are to be like Jesus. We are conformed to his image. One is a moral likeness. Now, moral likeness has to do with the state and the condition of my soul. And that moral likeness or moral image, we know we lost in the garden, in the fall. But God's whole aim is to restore it. And it involves, our moral likeness involves two things. One, restoration of the original relationship that I had with God. It was a free, welcome, um, loving conversation that Adam and Eve had with God. Um, I don't mean at all that it was trivial or flippant or lacked the reverence of a cre creation to the Creator, but still it was, it was an intimate, friendly, warm relationship. We lost that, tragically lost that, in the sin of Adam and Eve and all of Adam and Eve's descendants, who we are. So it's a restoration of that original relationship, and that involves the forgiveness of the practice of sinning and rebellion, which is what estranges us from God. So when that's out of the way, that relationship can be restored. And then further, we not only lost a relationship, but the human heart lost its resemblance to God, too. No longer is our heart spontaneously inclined to righteousness, holiness, love of God, but we're now inclined spontaneously to the other direction, unbelief, rebellion, self-sovereignty, that resemblance also has to be restored for us to really be restored to moral likeness. I cannot truly be conformed to God's Son if there remains in my heart a, a subterranean kind of stream um, bent to rebellion against God and its corollary, self-sovereignty. I'm Jesus didn't have that. If I'm going to resemble him morally then and have a heart like his, which we can, that has to go. Both of these things, the relationship and the resemblance, are restorable and they are restored when we meet the conditions that God has laid out for the relationship, it's repentance and turning from sin and faith. And for the resemblance, it is total renunciation of self and what I see in my heart that is self-centered and faith in God to cleanse my heart of that inclination and restore the resemblance of the moral likeness. There's a second, then, kind of likeness um, to the image of God were, be, were to be restored. There's moral, but then there's a mature likeness. Now, mature likeness 
is gradual. Moral likeness is instantaneous, both in the sense of forgiveness of sins and then later of the cleansing of inherited depravity. But mature likeness unto Christ is a lifelong process, and it is really never completed until glorification, when we go to heaven. But in the meantime, there is the gradual growth in grace, refinement, molding, sanding by God's Spirit. There's sometimes, there's, there's heating, there's some hammering um, by the goldsmith or the silversmith, and some of that is not necessarily pleasant, but it produces peaceable fruit of righteousness. There's experience, deepening wisdom. There's deepening sense of the production of the fruits of the Spirit. All of these things are a part of the overarching goal of God that we be conformed to the image of His Son. We can have the moral image by meeting the conditions and by faith, and then the Christian walk, however long the rest of our life is, is attaining more and more to the mature likeness of Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, may we know the reality of a restoration of the moral likeness of Jesus to our hearts, and then may we all be busy with you, not on our own, but with you and cooperating with you in the producing of the fruits of the Spirit and the mature likeness of Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen.